Hello Covidians, uh, still here I'm happy to say, I say pinning my glasses behind my ears because if I don't wear this thing now I fall off or I lose them or something. Still here, a few days before my birthday and we're still here. We haven't managed to uh, nuke the world yet. Well I'm happy to use the word yet because that means it hasn't happened yeah and uh, i don't know do you go from sort of thinking it might happen in the next 24 hours to believing that it never will happen i don't know oh, i've got to trim this beard it's getting in the way <laughs> but what do you think uh, do you uh look i'm a child of the Cold War, as you know, for crying out loud, Cuban Missile Crisis, Kennedy, Bay of Pigs, Vietnam, all that lot, Tom Lehrer, a great American uh, satirist who existed even in those days, um, who, would suge who suggested in one of his songs uh, that um, we'll all go together when we go, every Eskimo and every Navajo when the atmosphere's uranius, we will all go simultaneous. Yes, we all will go together when we go. He's also the one who wrote the song about some um, little Johnny there going off to war. And he said, you know, with every great war that we have, one of the things we do is that we write songs about that war so that we can, after the war, remember them nostalgically sitting around the fire in peace and quiet. He said, well, OK, World War I and World War II, fair enough, yep. But he had this idea that if we're going to write songs for World War Three, we'd better start writing them now. Google Tom Lehrer, absolutely brilliant, OK. And one, he said that the boys will be bravely singing on their way off to fight. World War Three will be, and forgive the singing, it's not perfect, but you'll get the tune. So long, Mum, I'm off to drop the bomb, so don't wait up for me. But while you shelter down there in your shed, but while you swelter down here and there in your shelter, you can see me. On your TV, while we're attacking frontally, you'll watch Brintley, Brinkley, and Huntley describing contrapuntally the cities we have lost. No need of you to miss a minute of the agonizing Holocaust. Now, little Johnny Jones, he was a U.S. pilot, and no shrinking violet was he. He wasn't scared when World War Three was declared. No, he wasn't scared. No, siree. And this is what he said on his way to Armageddon. So long, Mum. I'm off to drop the bomb. So don't wait up for me. And so it goes on. I don't do justice to the song because I only half remembered the lyrics at the end the best bit is um oh what is it the best bit he says you you can look for me uh, when you can look for me when the war is over an hour and a half from now an hour and a half from now Okay, okay, everyone's trying to say, no one's going to do it, Tony, no one's going to do it, no, no, no one's going to do it. Mutually assured destruction will work. Even with Putin, it will work. It really, really will work. Somebody will, will pull Putin's figure away, finger away from that button. Is somebody going to pull Biden's? sort of geriatric digit away from the button, Mark Nuke, when someone... Hey, Joe, what? Catch the nuclear football! Oh, Joe, gee, I've always wanted to do this. <laughs> Is someone going to pull that geriatrics idiot finger off the nuclear button? Is someone going to pull 
bozo's figure off the finger off the nuclear button. Yeah. The point is, my friends, it could happen. It can always happen. Yes, it can always happen, but since the end of the Cold War, it's been kind of less likely to, hasn't it? Yeah? I don't know. My point is this. I still bloody maintain that the people in power, the people who really run the world, let's be honest about this, it's, it's not government, it's not elected or non-elected, representatives that make the decisions and run the world of course it isn't it's billionaires not just russian ol oligarchs and whatever but billionaires trillionaires everywhere yeah everywhere there is the money that comes from that military industrial complex those are the people, in the end, who make the decisions. Whoever they get to press the button or govern for them is absolutely irrelevant. Yeah? They make the decisions. Okay? And one of them, in those you know, few very powerful people who control the future of the world yeah it only takes one of them behind their figurehead obviously obviously whom they all just manipulate it only just takes one of them to think hang on a second now we could just press the button and and we could have the greatest monopoly of everything on the planet not realising, of course, they'd have the great greatest monopoly of ash on the planet. Don't for one moment think it's the people in power, the ones you apparently vote for, and whatever, who decide on things like this. It's not. It never has been. It never will be. That's out of our hands. What I would say practically, though, is watch Putin carefully. Putin is, in this, perhaps, playing a very different game to what we seem to think. Yeah? He's playing a very, very different game. And this thing about, um, you know, putting their nuclear forces on standby and all this lot, I think this is, yeah... It, it, I truly believe it's designed to escalate pressure. Yeah, it's designed to escalate pressure. Yeah, it's designed to um, not provoke, but just to escalate pressure. What I'm hoping for is that Putin will have a way to save face and back down. Yeah, I don't for one moment think he's going to go oh it's all right we'll pull the troops out now yeah yeah we've achieved what we want we're all going home no i i don't think that for one single moment i think the carnage will continue i think the people will continue to die have to say it obviously our policy on taking refugees for crying out loud it's barbaric it's barbaric Barrack. Yeah? But of course no one shouted and screamed and made a lot of noise when you know all the when Palestine was invaded by Israel. No one made much noise about their illegal occupation of that state. In fact, everyone said, well, you know. The uh, Israelis are the good guys, the Palestinians are the terrorists, and, um, you know, they, they, they should be occupied. They, they, they should be occupied, and Israel took the land that belonged to it, and that's quite right. Yeah. Well, that's double standards, isn't it? 
absolute bloody double standards. You see it so much, yeah? What about the uh, war in Iraq and all the uh, war crimes we've committed there? Oh, sorry about that. We've just knighted Tony Blair. He's a knight. He's a knight of the realm. But watch Putin. He's playing the long-term game. And uh, I don't think for one moment he's going to stop. I don't think he's going to stop. But please, God, if NATO gets attacked by the Russian forces, any member of NATO, I think that is the end of the world. And one other thing to be very much aware of, you can hear a lot of this preached in the media that it may be possible to fight a limited nuclear war. And I've said this before, yeah. And just dial in a sort of low yield on your warhead or whatever. And we, we can just do it tactically. We'll just drop a few nukes here, a few nukes there. That is theoretically possible, but it would soon escalate into it to the exchange of intercontinental ballistic missiles because the very command and control structure on the ground would start to disintegrate and the decisions would be made by increasingly junior people as the chain of command is knocked out and then global nuclear war yeah i truly believe that let's hope to god that nobody uses nukes i really hope to god they don't because I do believe if that even starts, you're not going to be able to stop it. You're not going to be able to turn it off. Obviously, continued campaign for total worldwide nuclear disarmament. Bye.